if the blood of Jesus is what protects, it means then Old Testament folks were not protected because Jesus' blood was not yet shed. Jesus had not yet died. So it then should tell us that even the disciples of Jesus were not protected because there was no blood for them to bleed. Because Jesus had not yet died. The devil is a liar. I want to start by saying the Bible gives us numerous instructions in victorious living in Christ. And pleading the blood of Jesus is not one of them. We have been cleansed, according to the Bible, by the blood of Jesus. And the Bible then calls him the high priest and mediator who always lives to make intercession for us, according to Hebrews chapter 7. And as his sheep, we are already under his protection. He is our shepherd. And as his sheep, we are already under his protection. But now the question will come and say, if pleading the blood of Jesus is not one of the ways that God gives us victory over the enemy, how is then Christ Jesus, who is our shepherd, protecting us as his sheep? The answer is very simple. He is protecting us through his angels. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has nothing to do with protecting believers. He is protecting us through his angels. Psalm 91 verses 11. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. He will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. What then that should tell you is that there are angels that know their assignment is to protect you. Their assignment is not to bring message or a revelation like Gabriel and other angels. But their assignment is to protect you. They know exactly what fights you. They know how it fights you. They know when it's fighting you. And the very same angels that God will order will not have to talk to you in order for them to stop the plans of the enemy against you. It is their assignment. And notice, if you may, this has nothing to do with the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's now use something that everyone will understand, no matter how slow they are. If the blood of Jesus, like you have seen some of you in Nollywood movies, people using the blood of Jesus. This is not Nollywood. This is the Bible. Okay, because some of you, you have seen that there and you have taken into your life, throw those things away. Now, let's use this example. If the blood of Jesus is what protects, it means then Old Testament folks were not protected because Jesus' blood was not yet shed. Jesus had not yet died. So it then should tell us that even the disciples of Jesus were not protected because there was no blood for them to plead. Because Jesus had not yet died. The devil is a liar. Now we then need to understand the Old Testament to know the New Testament. Jesus in Hebrews, he says, I came in a volume of a book and it was written about me. What he's saying there is that the Old Testament was about him. So in order for us to understand what the blood of Jesus is for in the New Testament, we need to understand what blood was used for in the Old Testament. 
Because in the New Testament, it cannot be used for what it was not used for in the Old Testament. Because God will never contradict himself. God will never oppose his word. After all, God gives himself counsel using his word. So in the Old Testament, the blood was never used for protection. No one, not even a single person, has ever used the blood, either the blood of goats, bulls, you name it, for protection. In the days of Moses, God will send his presence. Sometimes we saw a pillar of fire by now. A pillar of fire by night. And we saw a cloud during the day. Walking with them. Guiding them. Let's, let's go to the book of Job. Because there is something there. Job 1 verse 10. Quickly. Let's understand how Job was protected. Because the devil himself spoke to God. As to how protected and fortified the life of Job was. The book of Job chapter 1 verse 10. NLT. Uh -huh. You have always put a wall of protection around him so satan is telling god that i'm not able to touch job as you are bragging about him because you have always put a wall no. is there blood there no, job according to god was a righteous man Come on. god had prospered him mm. but satan when he comes now and god says to satan have you noticed my servant job satan says yeah i've seen that guy and of course, I've tried him, but I mean, nothing will happen because you have put a wall. Man is God protected and the devil knows it. And Jesus had not yet come to die. So there is no blood of Jesus that was shed. But Satan confesses himself, not a demon. The man is protected. How was Job protected? I know you are throwing now the Old Testament scripture, Exodus chapter 12, where... The Bible said, when I see the blood, I will not strike. Let's go to that same scripture. Exodus chapter 12, and we read from verses 11. I'm looking for verse 13, of course, but just for the sake of context, let's do verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, and we'll do verse 14, of course, you know, just for the sake of context, but I'm looking for verse 13. Uh-huh. Verse 11. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Uh -huh. Be fully dressed, mm -hmm. wear your sandals, mm -hmm. and carry your walking stick in your hand. Mm -hmm. Eat the meal with agency, mm -hmm. for this is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Yep. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt mm -hmm. and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal. In the land of Egypt. That's why we celebrate Passover because there was a passing over. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute what? Judgment. judgment. For, remember that judgment. Uh huh. For I am the Lord. My God. But the blood. But the blood. Uh huh. But the blood on your doorposts. Uh huh. Will serve as a sign. As a what? As a sign marking the houses where you are staying. Uh huh. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over. Uh huh. This plague of death will not touch you. This plague of death. So what was the judgment? Death. Death. He says this plague of death will not touch you. Why? Because there will be a blood, and that blood will serve as a sign. But wait a minute. Sign to what? Sign is actually the word sign that you know. Sign. It is like a signpost pointing you somewhere. So if somebody sees a sign, it is easier for them to go to God. So signs are to point people to God. So it's like when you are traveling, if you see a sign that says 230 kilometers or miles before Florida, before Johannesburg, that sign is not saying you have arrived in Johannesburg or in Florida. So you cannot take your bags and start singing, I'm in Johannesburg. No, it is what? A sign. But where is the sign pointing you? To Johannesburg, to Florida. So when we talk about signs, signs are for unbelievers. So that we can through them point them to God. So the blood was for sign. But watch this now. There is death that is coming. 
But the blood will stop death. But the blood serves as what? A sign. Now, let's break that down quickly. The blood did not protect these people the way you think. Because after that event, you have never seen anyone using blood on their doors. It was a once-off instruction. But what was the blood really doing? We know it was a sign, but why the blood? Why not water? Why not something else? Why the blood? It is because, according to Romans chapter 6, go there please. Chapter 6 verse 23. No, we'll talk Bible. We'll talk Bible. Don't worry. Let's not talk stories. We'll talk Bible. Let's go. Of Romans chapter 6. Yep. Verse 23. Yep. Sin pays off with the death. Ah, ah, there it is. Sin, that's what? Pays, pays off, off with the death. death. Meaning every time there is sin, sin can help but pays off with the death. That's why King James says the wages of sin is death. Meaning death is never death outside sin. Because the wages of sin is death. So death is a baby of sin. Without sin, there is no death. That's why in the Garden of Eden, death was able to enter because sin has had entered. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says sin pays off with death. But what happens now when we eliminate sin? It means we have dealt with death. So death is not really the problem. The problem is what births death. The problem is what gives birth to death. So if you want to stop death, what do you stop? Sin. Now, so you need to understand that death does not really have a foundation outside sin. So what do I do to stop death? I deal with sin because the wages of sin is death. So there is no sin, there is no death. So God in Exodus comes. He says, I'm about to rain death. But as for you, put blood on your doorsteps as a sign. And when I see the blood, death will pass by. But now, why the blood? Let's quickly go and read the book of Leviticus. Because we are dealing with the Old Testament. So sometimes we need to answer Old Testament with Old Testament. Book of Leviticus chapter 5 verse 9. Yeah. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar. Uh -huh. And the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. Mm -hmm. It is a sin offering. It is a what? It is a sin offering. So the blood in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, remember, these are God's people. The blood was to cover. When the blood was on their doorstep, it was not that because they were Israelites. God did not say, because you are my people. When the angel of death pass, the angel of death will know you. Death does not care. When death sees sin, death visits. So God will have said, you are my people. Don't worry, we'll finish them. You just remain calm. No, you had to put the blood. Why? Because once sin is covered, death has no power. Oh, death, where is your sting? That's what the Bible says. Why? Because Jesus had dealt with sin. And sin was the sting of death. So without sin, death does not have sting. Jesus did not come to die for your protection. In terms of from demons and all of that. That was not the main issue. In the book of Psalm, he told you, I will order my angels to protect you. So there were angels already ready to protect you. So he's coming here. He came to deal with one major problem once and for all. He came to deal with that which separated men from God. So when this, the blood was put on their doorstep, their blood covered the sins. Here's something that will shock you. Even if you were an Israelite in Egypt, if blood was not on your desktop, death entered your house. So this had nothing to do with, I am God's child. 
This had everything to do with the blood being on your doorstep. But what was the blood for? To cover sin. Because as long as sin is not present, death has no power. So the angel passed, not because the blood kind of protected them like this. No, the blood covered sin. And death could not enter. As God's word declares there, the death will reign over Egypt. I will judge even their gods. And of course, according to the Bible, Egyptians died. They are firstborn, including the firstborn of Pharaoh, even animals. But guess what? The children of Israel were spared. But here's now what will shock you. From that time until the book of Revelation, we have never seen them using the blood again. They went to wars. They fought. One time, uh, Caleb and Joshua and other guys were told to go and spy in other lands. When they got there, they saw giants. They came back. They said, mm -mm, we are like grasshoppers before these guys. And we know what Joshua said when he gave his good report. But now watch this. We don't hear, kill animals. Let's use the blood. It will protect us. Never. You are the only one doing that. You are the only one. The apostles never did it. Prophets never did it. You are the only one. Where did you get that?